Uh, good afternoon, Professor Khami. Hello, good afternoon to you and to all, and uh, uh, also to Professor Babu. And again, thank you for accepting our invitation. And uh, we, we are so honored to have you as the lecturer in our course. Okay, Professor uh, sure, Babu, sure. I would you. like to first, if you let me, um, I, I, I have a short introduction, then we start to hear your valuable presentation. Do you let me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello and uh, good day uh, to everybody. It could be good, good morning or good afternoon, good evening, it depends on the where you live, do you live. And welcome to the fifth session of evidence-based um, dentistry online virtual program. That would be a wonderful session by the presence of two vernal international speakers. Thank you so much, uh, our attendee, for joining us and we appreciate your attendance. In two previous sessions, if you remember, um, Professor Khami and Professor Shamshiri lectured about basic and advanced research for evidence-based resources, and then about different types of epidemiologic studies and critical appraisal of these studies. And today, critical appraisal will be further explained by Professor Babu and Professor Jakub, uh, that would be our next lecture. I would like to welcome to them and our thanks and sincere appreciation of our special guest. Before uh, the speech, I would like to briefly introduce these well-known speakers uh, who are experts in the field of evidence-based dentistry. Um, Dr. Babu is a faculty member of Preventive and Respirative Dentistry Department of University of Chicago, the United Arab Emirates. He has over 12 years of academic and research experience. He's the associate editor for International Endodontic Journal. He's also recipient of Young Investigator Awards in 2019 from International Medical University. He's a prolific researcher and has 82 publications in well-known and reputed journals. Uh, he's one of the project leaders for developing guidelines for various study design in endodontics. His area of research interest is in antimicrobial peptides, nanoformulations for root canal disinfections, evidence and evidence-based dentistry. Uh, I would have a short introdu introduction of uh, Professor um, uh, Jakub, uh, that would be our next present um, speaker in order to save the time. Uh, after Dr. Um, Babu, Dr. Shaju Yakub um, will present and will have a lecture on evidence-based dentistry. Uh, he's an associate professor in the School of Dentistry, International Medical University, Kuala Lumpur. Um, he is currently the program head of Bachelor of Dental Sciences. His expertise in, is in several fields, uh, such as epidemiology, evidence-based dental practice, systematic review, metal analysis, and dental education. Dr. Shaju regularly conducts workshops and CPD program in this area of interest. He has a specialized in periodontology, holds a doctor degree in oral epidemiology, and has a certificate in health profession and education. Considering this rich resume of these two lecturers, we are very fortunate today having the opportunity to uh, receive their lecture at our workshop. Uh, I don't waste your time anymore. We are impatiently waiting to hear your speech. And Professor Babu, the stage is yours, please. Sorry, uh, before Professor Babu is going to start, I want to have one minute uh, introduction about him. Uh, I am Mohammed Hussein Nekufar. I'm the director of the International Relations of Tehran University of Medical Sciences. I'm uh, scientifically, my background is endodontics, so I'm an endodontist and also my PhD is in biomaterial. But uh, please, uh, today, everybody be very careful because today, we have uh, Professor Venkatesh Babu, and in 
our field in endodontics and in general in dentistry, you cannot see these days anything in evidence-based dentistry without Venkatesh Babu, believe me. When I find him, when I saw his publications, I really, really enjoy. And I find myself on the moon, you know, he's amazing. And he's very bright and he's thinking by evidence. He's even thinking by evidence. It's not just uh, teaching evidence-based dentistry. And I mean it, when I'm saying that I mean it. I really enjoyed from the journal club sessions that we have with him and about the way that he looks and criticizes the articles and thinking about the articles. He taught us how to think by evidence. This is very, very important. And I'm really, really honored and happy to say that uh, Venki is now our visiting professor in Tehran University of Medical Sciences. He has already accepted to supervise our PhD student and supervise our Master of Science student as well. So this is amazing. So Wenki, we are very proud. I understand you have received an, uh, as a, a young uh, scientist award. I don't see any young person there. You are not a silly young. Maybe, maybe you got it a uh, hundred years ago. I don't know. You look very mature. <laughs> you look very mature. By the way, thank you very much. I feel today that I'm your student and I'm ready to learn. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to thank Prof. Nikofer, Prof. Kami, and everybody, and special thanks to uh, Tums University for giving me this opportunity to share my whatever little knowledge which I have. So with this, I will begin this my presentation. Uh, can I screen? My, can I share my screen? Yes. Yes, you can. It's not. So you have to tap the green tab in the bottom of the page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Can you see my slides? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. So today, uh, my topic for my today's presentation will be on systematic review and meta-analysis. As you know, this topic is a very vast topic. So today we have four hours in our hands. So we have split it into two halves. The first two hours will be dealt by me and another two hours will be dealt by my close friend of mine is Dr. Saju from Malaysia. So this four is my objective today. So I will be explaining you the, what are all the types of review and what are all the statistical tool can be used. Next is what do you mean by protocol registration and what has to be done for that? And what is the process involved in conducting the systematic review and meta-analysis? And how do you apprise the systematic review? If you know this first, second and third point, can you see my cursor on the screen? Yeah. Yes, yes, we can see. Uh, if you see this, if you understood this two and third point very clearly, this fourth part will be very easy for you. So in my presentation, I will be going very slowly. I will be explaining it to you in detail, few particular aspect. Still in case if you have any doubts, please stop me then and there. So the one more thing is in between my presentations, I have small hands-on type of activity. So I'd be very happy if the participants have uh, volunteered for that and give back your answers. Because as you know, nowadays, most of the time we are sitting in front of the computer. I don't know what's happening in other side. So that's why I made it like that to make it a little more interactive. But you have to spend only 30 seconds or a minute's time, not more than that. So because I used to ask only simple questions, any day I'm a student friendly person. So that's why I made it very simple. So you can feel free to answer the question. If it's wrong, you nothing to worry so that we can discuss so that everybody can learn from your mistake and everybody's mistake. So please feel free to answer those questions. 
So coming to the systematic review, uh, don't worry, I won't go too deep into the subject. I won't cut, copy, paste it from the textbook. It will be more relevant and easy for you guys to capture. So the definition for systematic review is, a systematic review is a review of clearly formulated question that uses in systematic and reproducible method to identify, select and critically appraise all the relevant research and to collect and analyze the data from the studies that were included in the review. If you see this particular definition, the first key word which you have to capture here is formulated question. So that's why most of the systematic review, they used to say the first important step is your research question. The next is if you see identify, select. So it means that is your process involved in your collecting your papers, which I will be detailing in next couple of my side. Next is the critical appraisal. Critical appraisal means what are all the tools which you have to assess the quality of included studies. So that part will be dealt by Dr. Saju in the next uh, after my presentation. So this is what the systematic review means. So systematic review and meta-analysis is a two different entities. So my systematic review means you should have a question, you should have a reproducible method to capture all the studies, plus you have to critically analyze that study. This is what is systematic review. The next most common doubt everybody used to ask me whenever I give my presentation is, is systematic review is possible in laboratory based studies? Answer is yes. You can do a systematic review based on laboratory based studies, but you have to understand very clearly that the laboratory based studies evidence is little bit lesser compared to clinical evidence. I mean clinical trials. So you have to take the result of the laboratory studies with a pinch of salt. So next is your meta-analysis. Meta-analysis definition is the statistical procedure for combining the data from multiple studies. I hope this definition is very simple. Systematic review, I used to collect all the papers. That's all. Meta-analysis, I used to extract the data put into the software. It will give me the statistical values. So that is what the meta-analysis does. So if you see this meta-analysis, I have these two groups here. So this image is something called forest plot. So this image will be there in your any paper which has meta-analysis component. So this is whole is something called forest plot. So here meta-analysis means any day only two intervention. I can compare only two groups. If you see this below this image, favor placebo and favor medication. It means in this particular meta-analysis, I'm comparing only two groups, placebo, pre-medication. This is my take-home message. The one more interpretation is, can you see here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It means in this particular meta-analysis, totally I have eight studies. So this is my second interpretation. If you see this forest plot straight away, you can say I have included eight studies. The next is you can see the oh, subtotal. Some meta-analysis image you will have the word called overall. Both are same. It means I have combined the values of all the eight studies. I am giving my final value. If you see this, this is 1.92. These are all the success and failures for both the, for all the eight studies. So it means I am accumulating all the results of this eight studies and I am giving the result. That is the meta analysis. Then how to interpret whether it's favoring placebo or medication? Can you see in this diamond symbol here at the end, which is close to that subtotal row? So if this diamond ring comes Towards this group, it means it favors pre-medication. If diamond comes this side, it's something called it favors placebo. 
so this is the interpretation of forest plot which most of us used to get confused and were much worried by seeing this forest plot is this clear i will repeat once again so you will meta analysis means only two groups so these two groups will be at the bottom these are all the number of studies which has been involved this is the overall in sense i am combining the results of this eight studies i am giving the result how will i get my result is based on this diamond if this diamond comes on this side it will be favoring this group in case if it's cross this line it will favor this group is this clear or if you have any doubts please voice out uh, professor babu may I have a questions about your very clear question a uh, very clear explanation I have a question. May I have? Yeah, yeah. please, please go ahead. Can you explain to me? We have, we could have subtotal and total. I, I could not, I could not understand the differentiation between these two. Difference between what? Between subtotal and total. No, no. It's a statistical value. In few software, it will come as. subtotal it means totaling of all this value in okay. certain software you will get a value saying that it's overall it means you combine all the studies and this is your final value that's all so you no Thank need you. to get confused more how Thank to you. do this meta analysis software everything my mm -hmm. friend dr saju will be explaining it to you in little bit more detail in statistical terms thank you appreciate and what is yeah. the meaning of this line because you said on the right side or left side of this line what is the name and what is the meaning of this line this line prof you are talking about this line right so this yes. is the line which exactly deviates between segregates between the two separate groups so if this as a statistical break line so in case if this crosses this line it favors this group if it comes this line this will comes favors this group for example here the value is 1 if the value is more than 1 automatically it will favor this group if it's less than 1 it will favor this group so that is the meaning of sorry that. may i have another question yeah sorry this mid line that as professor nekufar ask about how it is determined it is always 1 how we can yeah. determine this line yeah this will be probably it will be one but more how you are getting this line everything you will be explaining it my friend will be explaining it to you in detail in meta analysis part okay. appreciate so the next if you see here my diamond ring is exactly on the line so it means my interpretation is here i am comparing mta and biodentin plus i have this so many studies here my total okay is this so is exactly at 1 so it means i will be this diamond is on the exact on the one so i used to say there is no difference between two material that is mta and biodentin so this is the take home message from this particular image okay so now it's your time so here what are all the things can you guys can interpret can anybody can say here or means is an occlusal reduction n or means no occlusal reduction so aim of my study is whether the occlusal reduction or no occlusal reduction helps in post operative pain reduction in root canal treatment so what is your interpretation now so totally how many studies i have included in this meta analysis just three. three exactly so i have included three studies now this diamond is favoring which group with the no uh, with the reduction exactly so this comes towards this side so it means my uh, meta analysis is favoring occlusal reduction so the take home message is the occlusal reduction helps in reducing the post operative pain followed by root canal treatment so this is how you have to interpret your meta analysis so the next is you have something called trial sequential analysis this is the analysis which is coupled and followed by meta analysis if you see this particular paper 
we have very clearly mentioned if you see this highlighted yellow lines right previous meta analysis showed that the use of oral pre medication increased the success of inferior alveolar nerve block in irreversible pulpitis we have mentioned 18 to 22 it means previously five systematic review has been published in the same topic whether nsid influences your oral pre medication ours is sixth paper but still what is the rational behind this paper is we have strongly showed there is a difference in the systematic review plus if you see this the yellow line highlighted line below the last word this is the our aim with conclusive evidence it means even though meta analysis gives positive or negative result trial sequential analysis is your evidence which confirms the result of meta analysis so to make it very simple the trial sequential analysis will confirm your results of meta analysis for example here i am comparing this so many studies for example i will tell you next slide okay can you see this image now this is the image of trial sequential analysis again here what are all the three things which you have to see is number one as i told you what is the groups here i am comparing placebo and nsid so this is the two comparison which i am doing it in this particular study next is this alpha spending line so here there is one value that is 131 the next is your blue dotted lines goes here can you see this something called z curve if the z curve goes towards this group means it favors nsid in case if this blue line comes like this can you see my cursor below below this line it means this will favor placebo this is my first take home message i will repeat once again here the z curve it goes towards this nsid group it means the trial sequential analysis shows nsid is better this is number 1 this will get you can get this value from the meta analysis results also the second interpretation of your meta analysis is to make this difference or no difference between nsid and placebo you need totally 131 samples in your randomized clinical trials whereas i have my z curve have crossed this alpha spending line it means the number of patient is more than what i required to get my result conclusive whether placebo is nsid is i can say whether nsid is better means my number of samples has to cross the required sample so that is the interpretation here so if you see this here my z curve has crossed this alpha spending that is 131 so it means to make the result conclusive i need 131 samples whereas my blue dotted line crossed away ahead so it means i can conclusively say nsid is better than placebo so there no need any second thoughts about it yes prof yes yes prof my question is about that can we say that okay the number of studies is now sufficient and the, the the journals are not going to publish anything about this topic anymore because this z curve passed the alpha uh, alpha spending line can exactly. we say that you, yeah sorry prof y yeah. can we say such a things can we exactly uh, prof so as of now we can say you no need any comparison between nsid and placebo because it's a proved aspect already but again there will be some other limitation for example inside nsid which nsid plays a key role so again for that you might uh, need a future randomized clinical trial but as such a whole you no need to do that in case for example coming to your point if i instead of nsid i 
specifically mentioned Ketrolac. Ketrolac versus placebo. Then as you said, I can clear cut least said, Ketrolac is the best. So you, you no need of any future trials. But here it is overall of NSID. And what is the difference between this analysis and umbrella review? Because in umbrella I'll be review, telling you, you bro. also do the same thing almost. No, in this trial sequential analysis, I will be dealing only with the individual randomized clinical trials. Whereas umbrella review is the review of reviews. These are two different entities. Yeah. If you see this, the interpretation is, I am going to see clinical success. Two material, one is MTA and biodentin. If you see my Z curve is not crossing this line as well as this line. It means no statistical difference between my MTA and biodentin. This is my first take home message. My second take home message is, my alpha spending line shows 1529 samples. Whereas so far in all this, can you see this dot, right? Black color dot is the number of studies. So this number of studies I accumulate, I get only 474 studies. So it means I need so many samples to make these results conclusive. So now my conclusion from this interpretation from this image is I can't conclusively say which is better MTA or biodentin. Future studies has to be required to make it conclusive evidence. Excuse me, I have a question again. Yeah, yeah, sure. How the alpha is determined because in different studies different. Exactly. So this determined everything is by the software. We used to key in the values based on the success and failure rate, which we used to put in the meta-analysis. So automatically this line and this image, we will be getting it up. So it's not in my hands to reduce this 529 to 528 or 5230. This everything is a system generated. So just I have to key in the uh, success and failures of each individual studies. So automatically this image will be generated. So generally uh, this Sorry, part will be dealt by my statistical friend. Yeah, tell me. So according to the systematic review that we have, we would have yeah. the software will determine the alpha line, not us, not, not you, not me. Is the software will determine the alpha line. Depends exactly, on the system exactly. that we have. Exactly, the software determines if it's in my hand, obviously I'll be biased. For example, I am very favorite to MTA, then I will be favoring my MTA, then why I have to favor biodentin? So that's why it's a non-biased thing. So Thank as an evidence-based person, I will be keying in the success rate and failure rate of previously published systematic reviews. So it's previously published randomized clinical trial values. So automatically software will be giving it to me. So I have to interpret this image, that's all. Thank you, appreciate it. Is it okay? Okay. Okay, now by seeing this image, can somebody can interpret what is the take home message? What's the first take home message here? Wenki, I suggest you choose the name between the part participants and ask them to turn on their microphone and their video and answer. Okay. Oh, one second, bro. I can see first is letter goes to Anita, Dr. Anita KV. Can you hear me? Okay, the admin, please uh, let Anita turn on the microphone and video and answer the question. Anita, are you there? Maybe you can choose the next one as well. Yeah, Dr. Tarek Abdo.
This is the way that we engage our participants. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, Tarek. Okay, Wenki, Tarek is ready. Yeah, I think we have to unmute him too, I think. Can you hear me, Dr. Tarek? Yes, hello. Yeah, please. Can you see this image? Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if you go to the presentation mode, maybe we can see the image better. Tarek, the question is, what do you understand from this image? Based on the previous slide that Wenki showed us, what do you think about this image? How do you interpret this image? Am I right, Wenki? This is the question. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Tarek, can you hear us? Okay, can I help you? This is the alpha line with 687. When alpha is 687 and we can see the Z curve, the blue line showed 230. What does it mean to, to you? Do you think this study shows the conclusive data or not? I think Tarek cannot uh, hear us or maybe... May I say... May I we say? have... Uh, uh, sorry, oh, we, have, we have a volunteer. Cannot hear. Tarek we have, we have a volunteer. I... Yeah, so... maybe a volunteer is a good idea. But Tarek said that I cannot hear. Ah. He wrote, he wrote. He wrote. I've been unmuted. Can I answer it? Oh, yes, please. Yeah, please, yes, please. But I can't uh, show myself. But what I feel from this um, diagram is um, it's not sufficient because it's not crossing the alpha line. We have two, six, eight, seven, and this is 230 uh, participants. Then the S zone is moving towards the favored chromocrystal. So it's a little bit. Uh, tending towards uh, formal crystal. If it were to be on the line, that means there is no difference between formal crystal and uh, ferric sulfate. But I think the Z zone moves a little bit towards formal crystal. Thank you. Perfect. So, your understanding is very clear now, right? So, I will repeat once again to make it very clear. Her interpretation is this blue line goes a little bit more towards formacrisol, but it doesn't cross this line. So it's not statistically significant. Next is the Z curve has not crossed this 687. It means the result is not conclusive. Now you understood very clearly, right? So this too is the interpretation of this image. Thank you. Thanks for your time. So next I will go for Thing. Uh, the next professor is... Bobo, may may I ask a question about your this yes the graph uh, there is two uh, two direction of uh, this two material ferric sulfate and formocrosol for yeah. but formocrosol the curve is is downward side the red line and for the ferric sulfate is upward does it have any meaning no, 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 no. That is not a thing. That's the basic curvature which depends on the number of studies. So that's okay. not a significant findings to be captured. Okay, thank you. So this is what the take home message is. Thank you. So now, systematic uh, review. Can I repeat the name of this study again? TS. Trial sequential analysis. Trial sequential analysis. Analysis. So it means I'm analyzing the trials. Okay. So now, so far, which I uh, spoke about is what is systematic review means just to combine all your papers, meta analysis, intervention to groups with the based on your diamond and everything you can say, which is favoring the next is trial sequential analysis based on the number of subjects or number of trials 
number of the samples will show you whether the results is conclusive or not conclusive so this is your take home message so far now you have something called network meta analysis initially i spoke about meta analysis now something called network meta analysis it means here if you see this title effect of oral pre medication on anesthetic efficacy of inferior alveolar nerve block in patients with irreversible pulpitis so in meta analysis i showed you nsid versus placebo so now better for the clinician it will be to specify which drug is best so that clinician can straight away prescribe that medication right so that would be better so for that point this network meta analysis comes into the picture it means i will be putting into all the available medication in the literature then i will be telling you as telling the clinician which is the better this network meta analysis will rank the drugs so according to this drug rank 1 will be the best for my objective so that's why the research question if you see see this yellow highlighted line which is the most effective oral pre medication drug so it means what are all the available drug i will be putting inside and i will be letting you know which is the better this software will give us a rank so according to this rank i will be telling which drug is the best so if you see this this is the network plot so i have many drugs in this so to go a little little deeper these are all the various medication which has been available in the literature for this particular study purpose to know which is the best medication for increasing the anesthetic success but if you see this i can see few blue color dots and few black color lines is this dots and lines are same in size or different how is it can anyone answer is the lines and dots are same in thickness or different different exactly. definitely different this is very different. obvious here some just so circular the, then, some of the lines are very thick some exactly are... so the lines are different in sense dot size is different means there should be some rational behind that right so the rational behind is number one first i will go to the dots this dot is bigger probably this dot is smaller it means so far in the literature this placebo intervention is the maximum number of studies used mm -hmm. if you see this next to this placebo i feel this ibuprofen 600 is more so it means so far in this endodontic literature for this particular purpose ibuprofen 600 is the highest number of studies has been explored next to this ibuprofen 600 i can see ketrolactin mg so that is the next common drug which used in the clinical trial then i see this alpro 0.5 is the smallest size i think it means very less number of studies has been used alpro 0.5 mg so this is my first take home message from this dot the next is between my connecting dots that line if you see this this line is very thicker it means more number of studies has compared placebo and ibu 600 combination it means many studies has compared ibuprofen 600 with placebo so that is my take home message next to this line i feel this line is very thicker it means ketrolac 10 mg and placebo has been compared quite often in many studies is this clear you uh, have any yeah. doubt i have a question exactly yeah tell uh, tell prof what does the does the length of this line has any meaning no length doesn't have anything just, just depends on intervention of, group mm -hmm. and number of groups to make the picture clear clear we have extended that uh, length but thickness is different length yeah. doesn't have any significance 
thank you. Uh, okay. Sorry, uh, my, I have, my question is about the cohort studies, because uh, for some variables, when I'm looking for the uh, causation relation of some uh, exposure, we don't have any medication to make this network analysis. For example, if I'm doing a study on, for example, the effect of uh, cigarette smoking on, on heart disease, or, and I have a lot of cohort studies that they work on other variables as well. For example, obesity, for example, I don't know, diabetes, everything. Can we make such a things with those cohort study or it is just for clinical trial? This is for clinical trial, Prof. In your case, I will explain to you. For example, uh, your doubt is, for example, you want to know association between the epical periodontitis and diabetic patient. Correct, for example, I'm telling. In diabetic patient, you will have a lot of variables, for example, gender, for example, age, for example, the condition of the diabetic and all those things. For you, for you, this thing, you have to do a meta-analysis. First, primary. Secondary meta-analysis, you have to do separately for gender, separate for male and separate for female. Then, for example, you might get a result saying that male patient, more epical periodontitis will be more. For female, it will be less. Then you can do your interpretation whatever way you want. You got the point. Same way you can come for next factor. For example, age, you are uh, splitting into two, less than 50 and more than 50. So then you can, whatever the results comes, you can say the age uh, less than 50 is more prone to epical periodontitis or not prone, whatever the results comes. So that will be doing for your question. This is for various materials which I have. I want to know which is better. For example, you will be having five injection technique. So you want to know which injection technique is better. For that, this purpose will be helping you out. If you have Thank only you. two intervention, straight away you can go for meta-analysis. You no need to go for this. So it should be intervention. For exactly. It's not for the exposure. Thank you very much. Exactly. Excuse me. So, it seems that we have another question by Dr. Abba. Yeah. Mm, so if, if my colleague please uh... okay thank you since you said the length does not matter but I can see the APRO 0.5 and AC CLO 100 they have the same length so I'm a bit confused in that aspect thank you so you, mean, you mean this length the and time. this length yeah. see that's At what I same. told here, the message, take home message is there is studies less compared between alprosolome and placebo and placebo and aciclofenac. That's all. The length doesn't matter. Only the thickness is matter. So length is not a concern here at all. Professor Babu, considering this graph uh, for the, about the diameter of the blue, the blue, di uh, the, the blue color, and can yeah. we can we make a decision? For example, the number of studies uh, about uh, placebo and DEXA uh, 0.5 is not enough, and we can do another study systematically. Exactly, exactly that you can do that. That is okay. the advantage of doing this craft. As you said, this number of studies is very less between these two groups, so we can do future studies. That is what your interpretation is. That is correct. Yeah. One more interpretation is all the dots are not connected. Can you see? For example, there is no line between Ibu 300 and Ibu 800. So it mm -hmm. means that these different types of medications has not been assessed in a systematic way. Exactly. Yeah, so in we can do trial. this study. Ah, but exactly. So, so far, there is no clinical trial directly compared ibuprofen 300 and 800. Yeah, thank you. That is the interpretation by seeing this. Yeah. Same way here, uh, not this study, one more uh, network meta-analysis which we published in Journal of Endodontics saying that pre-op medication helps in post-operative pain reduction. Same way I have compared a lot of medication in that two or three medication so far less has been explored 
so hence forth we took over that as a clinical trial again that has been published recently in international neurodontic journal so that is how you have to interpret that is the main aim for the person who is doing the systematic review so the future studies also you can capture from the results of systematic review okay so is this clear in this network meta analysis what are all the points to be captured one i, th of I think uh, there is a question one of the yeah. audience they already uh, wrote, wrote their question this, uh, and the question is from dona she said yeah. that the study have to be written separately that is why the lengths are different so thickness has to be used to show the difference my thoughts So sorry, I think you word. already said that the length is not important. Yeah, yeah, length is not important. The study have to be written separately. That is why the lengths are different. So thickness has to be used to show the difference. My thoughts. She said exactly. that. Exactly. Okay, so the length is not important, and it depends where do you put just the name of the medication. Exactly. And it, it can be swapped. Doesn't matter. Yeah. but the thickness showed that the number of studies that they compare these two variables with each other exactly so again this is a system generated so again i am not altering these lines or dots and everything it's a system generated okay okay if you see this can you somebody can interpret this image based on your size of your dots and your line We can is there any see volunteer? Some, one of them is um, um, is red, so I do not know the meaning of red color to interpret it. I can just okay. draw the color. Okay. Okay. First, you just interpret what are all things you can. Then I will give you the answer. Uh, according to the graph, I found that the lidocaine, artocaine, is the most important um, anesthetic agent that has been used up to now for for comparison. Uh, and okay. while the other material the anesthetic agent like bupropion and prilocaine and mefepoxine has been less investigated but they are uh, this material has been connected here to each other so they have been compared to each one but i do not know the meaning of like lidocaine with the red color okay your interpretation is correct the first size of the dot is more in lidocaine it means the lidocaine is the number of studies is more same way the line connecting two dot is this uh, between lidocaine and artocaine is more thicker between it means number of studies number of clinical trial published comparing lidocaine and artocaine combination is more coming to your question why this lidocaine in this image is red color is because we took this lidocaine as the reference based on this lidocaine we compared all those things so to make it very clear we just changed the color of lidocaine as we all know the basic anesthetic solution is lidocaine you got oh. the point right so that's why we compared this lidocaine into artocaine lidocaine and mepivacaine so that's why we made it little bit uh, different for the readers to easy to capture so that's why lidocaine is red color one more thing is if you see there is no line connecting between bupivacaine and prilocaine mm -hmm. so it means future study can be done comparing bupivacaine and prilocaine mm -hmm. uh, sorry about the red color you you mentioned that because it is a basic anesthetic agent the color and is red and i am comparing it with the other thing that's all okay that's it. apart from that is not a major thing thank you. Okay, one I of think the no. audience have a question. Please explain again why red color. I, uh, Professor Babu just explained about it. Yeah, why red color is? Mm -hmm. I made this as the comparison. So I comparing the other four anesthetic agent with lidocaine. So that's why I made this lidocaine as red color. Apart from that, is nothing more significant here. Professor Babu, okay. there is a question. I think I, I I think in my mind when there is no study about comparison of between bupropion and prilocaine, probably it was not important that nobody has studied up to now yet. 
What is the reason? Probably it's not important. What is your idea? Uh, Among these, no, the thing is, nobody has. Uh, okay, exactly. So here, the, I think in this prelocane, totally you have only one or two studies. So okay. that's why nobody has compared prelocane with bupivacaine. As we all know, as we all know, the basic comparison anesthetic solution is lidocaine. So that's why prilocaine has been compared with lidocaine. First, prilocaine has been compared with mepivacaine and artivacaine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that's why in that particular study, they have missed the bupivacaine. That could be the reason. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Next comes to umbrella review. So that is what our Prof. Nikufer's question. If you see this title, is articaine more effective than lidocaine in patients with irreversible pulpitis? Here, I am going to compare only the two anesthetic solution, articaine and lidocaine. So what I am going to do, umbrella review means is the collection of previously published systematic reviews. And I am least bothered about randomized clinical trials. So, I am collecting what are all the reviews already published in the literature. Then I am analyzing. Then I will be giving my result, which is better. So, in so far, I think in this particular study, we have got almost six systematic reviews. I think the results is totally controversy. Few systematic reviews supports articaine and few systematic reviews says there is no difference. So that's why we underwent this umbrella review and we finally we concluded saying that articaine is the better. Once we collected all the systematic review, you have to critically appraise the systematic review based on this Amster tool. Amster tool is a tool which is available to assess the quality of systematic reviews, not clinical trials, okay? Again, I will repeat, Amster is a tool which you should to critically appraise the systematic review based on this 11 points. So at the end of my presentation, I will be explaining it to you in detail about what about this 11 parameters in my last couple of my presentation. Okay, here I'm not explaining it to you in detail because at this particular section, my aim is to explain to you to understand what is umbrella review that's all this particular point i will be explaining it to the end of my slide because you should have some basic knowledge about this priority design and all those things once i explain to you to you finally you can capture what is this amster tool is so as of now you guys are very clear what is systematic review umbrella review meta analysis and everything i have a question about the explanation you had may i yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, according to the explanation, according to this graph, umbrella review is the quality assessment of the quality of the systematic review. Yeah, so uh, no, 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 no. Umbrella review means it's the collection of systematic review. Once you collected, that also it involves in the um, process of umbrella review. Okay, uh -huh. followed by you have to critically analyze your systematic review. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Thank for example, in your regular systematic review, as I told you in the definition, first is research question. Next is collection of individual papers. Third part is critically analyze your individual studies. Whereas for umbrella review, first is again, you need a question again, you have to collect your published systematic reviews. Third will be your analysis part. That is more appraising your uh, published systematic reviews. Yeah, thank you. Is this clear? Thank you, yes. Okay. So now I will be telling you what is the process involved in conducting systematic review and meta-analysis, I won't go too deeper. Uh, Dr. Saju will be explaining it to you because it's morely related to statistical part. I will be telling you how to conduct as well as how to report in sense how to present in the manuscript. I personally feel you need this both the items to be very clear. You should know how to conduct as well as you should know how to present in your manuscript. 
So totally your systematic review and meta analysis, you have three phase. Phase one deals with protocol registration, your mm -hmm. research question, your study selection process. Fourth is your data extraction. Protocol registration means before starting your systematic review, you have to, you should have a good plan. Like how we used to submit our uh, research to our research ethics uh, committee like that. You should know what are you planning to do. Then you have to register your protocol. So as we all know, what is the reason behind our registering our thing in our ethical committee? Because they will see the process of your conduct of your study. They won't go too deep into your content of your study. Just they used to see how is the process involved. Next is they will to make sure that you won't have any bias in your future. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is for protocol registration. I will be explaining it to you in detail in the next couple of my slides. Next is a research question. Next is study selection process. What is the method involved in collecting the individual studies? Fourth is what are all the parameters to be extracted from the individual studies? Phase two and phase three. Phase two is the quality of included studies. That is risk of bias assessment. This will two will be dealing with talk by Dr. Saju. Phase three is meta analysis. Okay. So as I told you, I will be dealing with this phase one protocol registration, research question, study selection process and data extraction. So now coming to your priori design protocol registration. So this is one of the popular database, something called Prospero. But again, this is not mandatory to register only in this database. You have lots of databases in today to register your systematic review. But this is the little bit popular database. First, you have to go into this particular website. This page looks exactly like this. Okay, here you have to create your account. This is a very simple process. Once you create your account, you will be into this page. Before registering or before starting on any particular title or topic, you should know similar topic has been registered in this database. How to find? Can you see here my cursor? Search Prospero. You will have a box here. In this box, Please type your keywords. Then you click this particular go. So it will automatically show you whether there is any previous systematic review uh, has been registered in this database related to your topic of interest. See here, for example, I have typed my uh, field of interest is pulpotomy. I just typed pulpotomy and click go. Okay, so automatically I am getting so many reviews. For example, here 28 records has been formed. It means already somebody is doing on the pulpotomy systematic review. So then you can individually see what are all the topic, whether it could be of your field of interest. In case exactly somebody has registered on your topic, still you can register, but you have to clearly state in what way your review is different from the already registered review. You will have an option. Once you enter, they will be asking, is there any systematic review has been registered in this particular database? If you give no, straight away you can go ahead with your next couple of session. In case if you click yes, Again, the next drop box will come saying that in what way your review is different. It's different. That's an obvious question, right? So why the same systematic review has to be registered in same database? So you have to clearly mention why is it different? So you have to give your reasons for that. That's all. Professor, you understood uh, now? Yeah, tell me. Uh, sorry. 
dis uh, disrupt you. So if I want to do a study, I should read one by one to know uh, what uh, the, the method material, the abstract, to know whether uh, the study design is similar to me, is different from to me? Exactly. Okay. Exactly, you have to see that. Okay, thank you. So one more thing here, which I would like to remind you is, again, Prospero is not a content expert. They used to scrutinize you, you only by the process involved in your systematic review or meta-analysis. They won't check and go too detailed into the content. Why you are comparing MTA with biodentin, like those type of questions they will be asking, like a regular journal reviewers. But they will be asking you, what is the process involved? How many persons are you planning to do? What statistical tool are you planning to use the meta-analysis? So like that type of questions they will be asking. Okay. So generally nowadays, I think this database is a little bit later. It's taking some time for giving the final clearance because of large number of public, not number of registration happening in this particular website. So once you enter into this Prospero database, can you see this 11 points? You have to key in this 11 points in your Prospero database. Number one is review question, search, type of study to be included, participants or population detail, intervention or exposure, comparator or control, primary outcome, secondary outcome, data extraction, risk of bias assessment, and strategy for data synthesis. So you have to prepare these 11 points beforehand so that once if you decided to register, you can straight away copy and paste from your Word document. Okay? So don't worry, I will be explaining it to you in detail what are all these parameters about. These first nine parameters, I will be dealing it up. This 10th, 11th will be dealt by my friend. So first is a research question. Yeah, yes, Prof. Winky, if uh, some person registered the uh, systematic re review in other uh, registering database, is it, do we need to search all of them or PressPro is the only one? No problem. Whatever database which you are planning to register in that only you have to see. For example, you are planning to register only in Prospero. It's, mm -hmm. well, you just check only in Prospero. That's all. No need to check in other thing. But to be in safer side, it's better to see that also. For example, one person would have been registered in OSF platform. Same topic in case you are also doing it up. One person can be registered in two years back. We are not sure about the status of that particular publication. So all the work which have, you would have been done, but at the end, somebody will be publishing in the same topic. So there will be problem in your topic to be getting published. So that's why to be safer side, it's better to check in the other databases as well. Can you name some of those databases? Are you going to name other databases other than Prospero? Please. Prospero is the popular thing, Prof. Next to Prospero is o OSF. These two only I have just generally used to register. Uh, I used to prefer most in Prospero. But wherever the, the website, the database you are registering, this is the key points you have to capture. Because this is the base behind your systematic review. So this has to be registered. Same way, these parameters is important for your systematic review as well. So writing your manuscript also. Okay. And, and for the registration, there is a question that the, one of the participants asked about other types of studies that we need to register uh, in addition to systematic review. Can you name other studies that must be registered as well? So you mean for example, clinical trials proof? No, you mean clinical yes, what trials? What type yeah, of clinical? studies should be registered? The question is that. For clinical trial, you have a lot of registries. I think individual countries also have that, I think. For example, India has something separate. I think Iran has something separate. So individual country has their own databases. You can register in that as well. Professor Babu, uh, sorry, for the previous, uh, from, uh, previous slide, 
Item number three that should be filled in Prospera was, was type of a study. Yes, types of the study. So in, in Prospera, I want to do a systematic review. Definitely it should be randomized control trial. No, it's Sorry. not like that. No, it's not like that. It's not? No, you can do the observational studies and everything, but you can't okay. register something with laboratory based studies. Uh huh, uh huh. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. But I'll be explaining it to you what's the significance of this and how to capture all those things I'll be telling in the next couple of my slides. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, now, what do you mean by research question? Research question, as you know, first thing you should have some basic knowledge behind any topic you should have what is the problem in existing literature. Once that is done, you can come to your research question. Research question has to be clear, focused, and concise. So it's directly related to your inclusion and exclusion criteria. As I told you, once your research question is framed, the next part of systematic review will be very easy. So your systematic review has to be based on this PICOS framework. That is, P stands for population, intervention, comparison, outcome, and study design. Population, it means, I will tell you with example. Here, now my problem of uh, literature, problem in existing literature is, I don't know which is the best material to be used for pulpotomy, either pharmacosol or MTA. Okay, you understood, right? This is my main aim now. So I want to know for pulpotomy procedure, either pharmacosol or MTA, which is the better material. A research question I have to write is, does mineral trioxide aggregate I means mineral trioxide aggregate is my intervention. I am comparing this intervention with pharmacosol that is the gold standard comparison right so does mineral trioxide aggregate compared to pharmacosol result in better clinical success so that is outcome so the outcome which i am measuring is only clinical success as we all know the pulpotomy outcome has been assessed by two ways. One is clinical. For example, pain on percussion, any sinus opening is there, any mobility is there. This is the one way. Another way is by seeing the radiographic. Right? For example, for cation radiolucency will be there, resorption will be there. Those things also will be considered as failures. So, but here I am concerned only about clinical success. It means what is my outcome? What am I going to assess? That is called outcome. Population is in primary molars undergoing pulpotomy treatment. So my focus only is on primary molars. I am least bothered about other tooth. For example, anti-primary anteriors and other teeth, I am least bothered. Same way, permanent also, I am least bothered. In randomized clinical trials so that is my type of my study okay so i am worried only about randomized clinical trial is this the way you have to write your research question once this has been framed your inclusion and exclusion criteria is 99 percent has been done for example in randomized clinical trials for example if i have a case report Will this be included in this systematic review? No. Exactly, because my focus is only on randomized clinical trial. For example, if you have an observational studies, will it be included? No. Exactly. Uh, as we all know, the biodentin also is one of the material for pulpotomy. If I have a study with biodentin, will this be included in this review? No. No, because my focus is I am going to compare only MTA with pharmacosol. I am least bothered about any material. It can be a ferric sulfate, biodentin, or glycinomer, or calcium hydroxide, whatever. I am least bothered. All those materials will be directly excluded. So next is here I am going to see only the clinical success. If any study has done only with radiographic success, Will this be included in this review? 
And no, because according to this question, it is just clinical success. Exactly. So exactly. So it means my focus is only clinical success. In case if I want to know both clinical and radiographic, you have to mention here clearly saying that clinical and radiographic success. Okay. It's all up to the content expert. How is he going to make it up? For example, one more person, he wants to know only the primary anteriors. Then his research question has to be only in primary anteriors. So for that particular review, molars will be excluded. You got the point? Yeah. So this is up to the content expert and the problem of literature, how he is he going to frame the research question. But whatever way you are going to frame, this is the principle five things it has to be mentioned population intervention comparison outcome and study design so if you know these five points you can write it here clearly review or research question type of study to be included is a randomized clinical trial participants or population i told you primary molars intervention is mta comparison is my Formacrasol primary outcome is clinical success. Still, you have something called secondary outcome. If you have anything secondary outcome, you can key in here. For example, in this case, my secondary outcome could be radiographic outcome. So I can mention my radiographic outcome is my secondary outcome. In case if you don't have secondary outcome, you just type nil. It means you don't have any secondary outcome. You understood now? Yes. So this is how you have to capture your research question. If, uh, when, if the intervention is more than one, it can we have such a thing? Can in our PICOs, can we add one more, two interventions, for example, or two comparisons? Uh, you should have two separate research question proof. For example, you know the biodentin also is popular today. So your research, first research question is, comparing MTA versus Formacrasol. Second research question is comparing Biodentin Formacrasol. If you want, the third research question is comparing MTA versus Biodentin. So like that- so you We have cannot put them in one, one PICO because when, what, what about when we want to compare them all together, like uh, uh, network- then you have to think about any one particular name which fits both. For example, we did one, but unfortunately it's in between uh, thing is bioactive endodontic materials. If you made it like that, MT also will come, biodentin also will come, calcium enriched material also will come. So that's up to you have to select that material. So that's uh, all those things depends on the content expert. So he has to design that. For example, uh, comparing the irrigants versus saline. Irrigant can be anything. Hypochlorite, chlorhexidine, EDTA and everything. But if you, your focus is only comparing hypochlorite and saline, calcium uh, chlorhexidine will not fit. If you kept your aim as the irrigants, any irrigant, then any irrigant will fit. MTAD, anything. So that depends on you, how you kept your research question. Professor Babu, sorry, I could not understand your answer to the question of Professor Nekufar that why you cannot uh, compare all, uh, write this question, all this material, for example, tier material in one question. Do you remember you showed us a graph with the blue and with blue color that just two, two blue color was connected together, not three, three, three of them or four of them? No, that is something called network meta-analysis. Now we are still talking about meta-analysis. Network uh -huh. meta-analysis, yes. You can cup anything. For example, MTA, mineral trioxide, everything will come. Meta-analysis means, as I told you, you can compare only two Just groups. Two. Okay. okay. Only two okay. interventions. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, can, I have gave one research question. In this research question, can anybody tell what is intervention or what is outcome in that? Or what is population? Ultrasonic activation irrigations is the intervention 
Exactly. As the antimicrobial activity is the group that we wanted to compare to. No, 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 sorry. Um, antimicrobial, better antimicrobial activity is the outcome. Exactly. And the control group they want to compare to is needle irrigation. Exactly. And the population of the study is extracted to samples infected with, with uh, this bacteria. Yeah. But the type of the study is in vitro study. That is exactly. Study. Now you understood, right? So for example, for this research question, you, uh, for example, studies used candida albigans as the microorganism. Will this study will fit into this study, into this review? In this, sorry, would you ask your question again? See here, my research question focused only on Enterococcus faecalis. Yes. If any one study has candida albicans, will that fit into this? No, we will, can. Exactly. Now you understood, right? So that is the importance of having clear and focused research question. Same way, study design, I am taking only in vitro studies. If I have any clinical studies, that will be excluded. Yeah. Okay. This is how you have to write your research question. Yeah. If you see this next, this is my problem of my statement. For example, while performing root canal treatment, the failure of inferior alveolar nerve block is 43 to 83% for irreversible pulpitis case. So I want to know NSID or placebo, which is the best. Can anyone frame the research question for this? Difficult. Can anyone? So now my comparing is with NSID with placebo. Okay. My problem of statement is I have failure in my anesthetic technique especially in irreversible by this case. So what, how will be my research question will be? What you, do you want the question? Hmm. I want you guys to frame a research question by using PICOS framework. Whether the in-state pre-medications um, could result in better pain reduction in inferior alveolar nerve block compared to placebo? Uh, can you repeat once again? Please, doctor, sorry. Um, I don't know. I'm afraid that I tell something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to worry. As we know, you don't need to be a content expert for this. Just try to just apply the principles of PICOS, that's all. So the, 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 the group that have, that's intervention is NSAID, I, exactly. I say it like this. I'm afraid to uh, sell the question the wrong way. I okay. can say the intervention would be NSAID. Okay. And the control would be um, placebo. Exactly. Um, sorry. The control, the control group would be placebo. Exactly. And the population would be patient with irreversible pulpitis. Good. And the outcome would be failure, failure rate during the inter inferior alveolar nerve block. Exactly. Now we understood, right? What are all things to be captured here? Yeah. So based on all your things, I will be framing it like this. In adult patient with irreversible pulpitis, do NSID, oral pre-medication is my intervention, compared with placebo, increase the anesthetic success. Or else you can say, which reduces the anesthetic failure. Like, however you want to interpret, you can put your English words. Yeah. In randomized clinical trial is my research question. That is my study design. Now you understood, right? Yeah. So Thank now you. it's very clear. I'm yeah. focusing only on adult patients. I'm least bothered about pediatric patients. But in previous like slide, the population study adult patient has not been written. So I could not say that. Ah, exactly. So that's the about your content of all those things. Yeah. So for example, still I want to more focus. I will put only molars with irreversible pulpitis case. So it means I will, I will exclude anteriors and premolars. 
so that all about how the content expert wants you to put it up on that okay excuse me here the two types should be should be clarified because the, in alveolar nerve like the premolar also will be will be affected the type of the tooth should be defined in this question or not except here in case if i am de not defining means i am including both okay that's the thing in case if i want to more focused i can use only molar so i'll be okay. excluding premolar okay. so that's what is up to the content expert based on the problem of literature you can select it up Okay. Okay. One of the participants has question, uh, Professor Babu. Yeah, sure. May, may I read it for you? Yeah, yeah. because I uh, can't see the chat box here. You can see that question. Must we always write the design when we phrasing our research question? Exactly. Initially, we had the concept of Pico. So in that you no need yes. No reason Prisma says you have to include yes in that pico. So that's why it's picos. Okay. Thank you. So the next is after writing your research question, you will automatically frame your inclusion and exclusion criteria. Okay. So now I'm going into the methodology process. How you have to write your methodology part then how you do you write your conduct your systematic review okay this is the main parts search strategy regarding databases how many database you want to have minimum you have to screen in your two databases date and language you have to mention it in your manuscript from which date you are starting and which date you are ending and what type of language are you planning to include either it's only english or any language again it's up to you then you have to search in any clinical trial registry okay then you have to search in your reference list of published reviews textbook and included articles then is if you need any missing information you have to contact the authors especially this part will be done while conducting your meta analysis because certain studies they would have been given their mean median whatever in graph so for us to do the meta analysis you need data numbers so for that we will be contacting the authors professor babu uh, i have a question again uh, you mentioned that uh, there should be at least the minimum two database for searching the literature and the clinical trial registries is another uh, uh, site that we should search about the topics who wants to have a systematic review on. So it would be three one, three. Yeah, three this, this, this is mandatory and this is mandatory. So clinical trial registries, you would be searching separately. This is different and this is different. Okay. Thank you. So first I will be going detail in about the search strategy. Search strategy means it's an organized structure of key terms. So how to do that is you have a, I will, for me, I will be explaining it to you one small example. So here I have octanidine and calcium hydroxide. Okay. I am want to know comparing these two antimicrobial efficacy against efficalis for root canal treatment, which is the best. Okay, this is my research question. So interventions means what are all the drugs? Here I'm computing octanidine and calcium hydroxide in one row. Next is what are all the outcomes related words? Efficalis, enterococcus fecalis, root canal and endodontic. Why am I using this endodontic is few title they would say comparing octanidine and calcium hydroxide which is the best disinfection for root canal treatment. You won't have the word efficalis in certain title. So we need that also. So that's why we are putting this broader scope root canal or endodontic. Okay. So generally, if you see the search term, we will have this Boolean terms and or. It means don't manually type and or in your this particular box. 
okay i will be showing you now how to do that once you enter into the pubmed website you can see this particular page okay then can you see this red circle click advanced once you click this advanced page automatically you will be seeing this particular page okay in that page i am typing here octinidin here i am typing calcium hydroxide in your left corner can you see this arrow if you click this arrow you will automatically you will get or and boolean terms so here i am selecting or so automatically it will come like this here octinidin or calcium hydroxide then can you see this search button if i click this search button automatically i will be getting this particular page it means octinidin or calcium hydroxide number of paper is 7000 plus okay amount <laughs> yeah same way i am typing root canal endodontic e fecalis entrococcus fecalis okay separately then if i click search i am getting 52000 plus papers okay then you go into the advanced you will have this summary octinidin or calcium hydroxide 7 plus root canal endodontic e fecalis entrococcus fecalis 52 plus if i click this add here automatically this will go to this box okay once again if i click this add box this will go to this box okay it will be like this then again if you see this this left corner i am clicking this arrow so automatically i am selecting and okay again once i am selecting this and i am clicking this search okay i am getting 3000 plus papers so can you see this top this is my search term so automatically it will come here you just copy this exactly and paste in your word document so this is how you have to create your search strategy how do you pick the words based on previous literatures and everything you have to combine all these words in one document then you have to key in in the pubmed then use your boolean terms and or so automatically this will be coming it up professor babu do we have to read all these 3152 articles exactly one by exactly. one exactly wow so the thing we need um, several so, number of person you no need to go for no no you no need to go for full text retrieval first you read the title in title itself most of the papers will be getting excluded almost around 90 to 95% you can exclude by reading your title and abstract you no need to go into the full text first i know even that because you uh, according to this keyword and you combine them all these keywords has been combined so definitely the title of this 3152 article has this key, uh, keywords um, or this words in their title so i should okay. read the abstract of them at least yeah yeah you have to read the title and abstract yeah okay so once this is done then you have for this question particular question can you tell us what are all the keywords that you can jumble it up just pick up the keywords the previous question which i showed you right so now you can't create too much just tell me the keywords alone one of them is ensay exactly one of them as anesthetic success exactly inferior alveolar nerve block is another keywords Hmm. So that's all. So based on this thing, see, as I told you, my aim is pre-medication, pre-medication, pre-operative medication, NSID, NSID. Some article it will be expanded in full form. So that's why to be safer side, I kept that as well. And inferior nerve block, irreversible pulpitis. Yeah. Sometimes you can put I A N B also because some title it will be I A N B. so like yeah. this you have to frame your research question is this okay professor babu 
For the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents, you have used another term such as preoperative medications. So during in the research, we should use the um, uh, term that can be replaced. Yeah, no, no, yeah, exactly. You have to see here. Yeah, my aim is exactly my aim is pre-medication. So that's why yeah. I put pre-medication there. In case if I don't want pre-medication, I can remove it off. Yeah. It, that depends on your research question and your aim of your study. Yeah. So now, how do you present those in the manuscript? You can copy paste exactly like this way. Can you see from here to here is my research question. Sorry, research search strategy. You just mm -hmm. copy paste. You can send it for publication or else this is one of the way. For example, post-operative pain, post-operation pain, so much. Root canal or endodontic, so much. I clubbed this one and two so much. And I have used the filter. I have got around 181 papers. This is also one of the method to present in your manuscript. Excuse me, what did you do? You copy the methods of each article and then what you do? Sorry, for what? Yeah, according to explanation in previous slide, you copy the methods of each article. Yeah. And then insert it in midline. Exactly. And compare it to them. Exactly. So no, this is for a manuscript I'm telling. While sending yeah. it for publication, you have to mention the search terms, right? Yeah. There are two ways. Or either you can copy paste it like this, or else you can give these detailed split ups like this. It's up to you. However you want, you can give it up. Mm -hmm. Or else if you want, you can give it that in the supplement data also you can give. There is two questions. Would you please answer to them, Professor Babu? Yeah, sure. You want me to read for you? Yeah, yeah because I can't see the okay. chat items here. Okay, I'm sorry. One of the participants asked that, can you tell how it is done as in a Scopus? Scopus, uh, I'm not sure about the Scopus database, but it's it will be easy in doing in PubMed. You can transfer the same thing in PubMed and other databases as well. Even in EBSCO host and everything, you can use the same thing. Yeah. And another uh, question is that, is that, did you check these words in mesh part or PubMed? No, that words, it depends on the content the expert to extract. So for here, for example, I just put, so based on the individual studies, the content the expert has to check it in the mesh terms and what are all words it captured, he has to include that in that particular boxes. Here, Thank for you. example, I'm just telling it up. So now the next is, you need minimum two databases. Any databases is fine. So generally, Medline, Scopus, Ovid, all those things are good. You can use it up. Next is your date and language. As I told you, you have to clearly mention your date and your language and your clinical trial registries. See, here I have clearly mentioned, I have used only two databases. What is the database I have given here? And what are all the clinical trial registries I have searched from inception up to October, whatever date. Inception means from the day beginning to what till what date you have searched. So this is how you can give. Here search strategy I have mentioned in the supplement. Again, that's up to you to mention whether it's to copy paste it here or in the table or supplementary is up to you. Same way here I have mentioned no language restriction were used. It means any language I will be including. In case if I have mentioned only English papers will be accepted, the other language papers will be deleted. Again, it's up to that individual person to take a call on that. For example, if you have a lot of good translators, then you can go for any language, no language restriction. If you don't want to do all those things, do restrict uh, only to English papers. It's up to you. But English language is mandatory. Okay, don't skip English language. Next is, once you have searched, this is how you have to represent in your manuscript. Can you see? For example, PubMed, we got 48 papers. EBSCO host, 
28 this is how you have to mention it up in your manuscript what are all the database has been searched and what are all the equal number of papers which you got it then so as of now any doubts in methodology in search strategy and your database and everything how to report all those things mm -hmm. can i go to the next part yeah next is reference list of the published reviews and textbook and included articles it means for example once you decided your topic you have to find out any reviews has been published previously and any textbook has been published in your particular title then you have to see the bibliography or the reference section of your previous review to make sure you are not missing any individual studies you understood so to cross check that and to reduce the bias you are doing this particular step because once you search your database and clinical trials automatically you will be getting the papers but few papers there are chances of missing in this databases so that's why this is very important either in previous published reviews textbooks and included articles the reference section has to be clearly searched okay uh, professor babu the reference of the method because in addition to the title and abstract of 3152 <laughs> articles that you found we should read the reference list of the method reference list of what no 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 of reference list of no, no, not for all the 3,200 papers. A reference list of previously published reviews. So for I example, I told you, right, for my MTA and Pharmacrisol, any review has been published in this topic, right? Yeah. So that review you have to extract and see the reference section. You no need to worry about all the individual studies. You no need to do that. Uh -huh. Okay. So... This is one of the reviewer command. If you see this command, reference 36 and 39 are not listed among three databases. So in this particular study, we have included three databases. But reviewer clearly said 36 and 39 reference is not listed in three databases. So what does it mean? So reviewer has checked in detail in all the three databases. And that's why he's asking me from where you got these two references. So how we answer that is the reference list of previously published systematic reviews has mentioned those two studies. So it means even though you use three databases, there are chances of paper to get missed. So that is the advantage of using your uh, checking your reference list of previously published reviews. Okay, same way you have to be very clear in noting down each and everything in your systematic review process. For example, one day you would be sending a mail to the that particular included studies. But after that, you will be writing your manuscript after three months time or six months time, you will be sending it to the uh, publication. At that time, the reviewer will be asking you how many reviewers you have been contacted and everything. Mm -hmm. So that's why I used to instruct you guys is, the day which you are doing something, you just please make a note of it. So you so that you won't forget that in the future. Okay. So the next is process is first title and abstract screening. So you have to read only the title and abstract. Then if you have any doubts or you are confirmed, then you have to go for full text assessment. You means you have to download your full papers and you have to read that by two independent reviewers so it means two person has to individually screen both the uh, in, to both the person has individually read title abstract and full text assessment in case if they have any discrepancy they have to uh, sort it out means reviewers has to resolve the disagreement by team discussion or by the help of third reviewer you understood right this right so it means two person has to screen title abstract and full text in case if they have any discrepancy they have to sort it out by the help of third reviewer or 
uh, third reviewer and with by the team discussion is this clear i have a question but before that dr nekufar professor nekufar has a question i will read it for you yeah professor nekufar asked that can we use same logic of pubmed search for other databases hmm yeah exactly we can use that okay and my question and uh, the disagreement between uh, these two reviewers would be about the about the title and abstract so there, there should be no confusion because the keyword is clear and the the of course, no to be safer said we are following this process as you said there won't be any doubt most probably but in case if you have doubt what will you do it's better oh, to consult with the third viewer right uh -huh. For example, between NSAID and ibuprofen, so it is clear there is no doubt. <laughs> yeah, there is no doubt probably, but sometimes you might get some doubt whether the study will be included in your study or not. So that's why we are giving that option. Mm -hmm. So in Thank case you. if we get that time, what will happen? That's why. Mm -hmm. Next is this is something called Prisma flowchart. This flowchart is easily freely downloadable from. prisma website in google you can type prisma systematic reviews so automatically you will be into that particular website this flowchart is mandatory you have to submit while you are submitting your script so here record identified through databases what are all the databases you are using you have to add all those values and enter it here then additional records identified through other sources for example the reference list or your clinical trial registries you have to capture it here it means other resources than your database okay then you have to use remove your duplicates for example one title will be replicating in three databases or four database whatever database you are searching so all those things can be removed then again what are all things you are screened among this 627 title and abstract after reading the title and extract i am excluding 607 papers so it means 20 papers i have to go for full text read in that full text read i am excluding one paper okay you have to mention what is the reason for excluding at this level means after reading your full text you will be excluding that paper that reason you have to mention in your manuscript here for after reading title and abstract you will be excluding few papers for those papers you no need to mention the reason is this clear then studies included in your qualitative synthesis means only systematic review then quantitative means meta analysis whether this 19 studies is included here in case few cases for example you won't have the data so then those studies will be excluded from meta analysis you understood this concept of image uh, i didn't understand the last two part the studies included in qualitative synthesis as yeah. qualitative synthesis means systematic reviews okay in same for example in one study you will have 10 articles to be included in systematic review in the 10 studies you won't have data so for example two papers you don't have any data then those two studies will be excluded for meta analysis so here you have to mention it as Eight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Understood. Yeah. So that is how you have to mention it up. Mm -hmm. So how? What are all the ways to mention that in manuscript? Is this is one of the way creating a table, saying that this particular table shows you the reasons for exclusion. These are really the studies and references. This is the reason. Okay. So next is. another way is just mentioning the reason in the manuscript see one paper was excluded because the anesthetic efficacy was not evaluated during access preparation it means my inclusion criteria is evaluating the outcome only during access preparation 
that this 32 paper would have been assessed in some other way. So I don't want that. So that's why it has been excluded here. Okay. So you have to clearly mention it up here. Again, the another way is to mention your reasons in your flowchart as well. This also can be done. See, these are all the reasons for exclusion. Professor Babu, so, one of our, um, pro, um, professor, our department of uh, epidemiology has a question. And uh, Dr. Pakhtaman asked, the problem is the search strategy is not the same in different databases. How do you deal with that? See, in case if it's not reflecting properly, then individual database, you have to create it up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there will be some confusion with certain words. So at that time, individual database wise, you have to create your search strategy. But generally, to my experience, I think it can be used in various uh, databases. And some another another attendee has asked that can we use Cochrane database for literature research? Yeah, you can use that. You can use that. That's what I said. Any database is okay. Any that database is, is okay. Yeah, yeah, any database is okay. Any database. Yeah. Thank you. So now the next is your data extraction. That is your characteristics of your table. So this characteristics table is important for you to present in your manuscript. Most of the time this has to be in your manuscript, not in your supplemental data. So what are all the principles which you have to capture is the details of participants, intervention, and outcome. As I told you, participants means your subject. So that's why if you see this first table, I have mentioned age and gender of the participants. Okay. Interventions means here my intervention is three drug. It means three groups. Can you see here? First is only acetaminophen. Second group, they have clubbed acetaminophen and ibuprofen. And third group is placebo. So these are all my dosage. Okay. At what time the drug has been delivered? Is this my timing? So this is related to my intervention. Next is outcome. Here my outcome is success. So that's why total number of samples. In this total number of samples, this is my success N and this is my percentage. You understood this? So yeah. you have to capture three important items, participants, intervention, and outcome. So based on your individual study, you have to capture so that the content expert has to decide. So if you see this, this is one of these, the in vitro study. So here, the participant details, and all those things is depends on the individual content. Here, the methodology is evaluation method. What are all the percentage? irrigation method. So according to that, you have to flex your study. This is not a hard and fast rule that the only this parameter has to be picked up. The important is three things has to be there. Participants, intervention, and my outcome. If you see this third table, this is one of the study where the education has been compared. Traditional education method with the technology enhanced method. So here, author, year, and country, number of samples, participants, the students, which year that has been involved, groups, what are all the technology enhanced learning methods will be the groups. Outcome has been measured at three levels, reaction, learning, and behavior. So that's why this will come under outcome. So you understood, right? So as of for this data, you need participants, intervention, and outcome. So this is the very important for data extraction. Again, what are all the intervention outcome participants? As a content expert, you have to decide for your own study. So in data you extraction, know? we should consider uh, in the data extraction part, we should focus on the PICO that we design first. Exactly. So it's more or less related to that only. Plus yeah. for this data extraction also, two persons has to be involved. Yeah. Same Professor like Babu, the, yeah, there is yeah. another question. Is it necessary to report kappa coefficient for 
probable disagreement between the authors uh, it is a yeah it's a better to do that it's a better to do that yeah, yeah it's, it's one of the authenticated ways saying that the two person has worked properly that's all so it's better yeah. Yeah. so is this clear now right so as i told you for this yeah. data extraction also two person has to be involved in case if you have any doubts it will be sorted by third reviewer or either by team discussion is this okay you yeah. understood now right so the now the next the final part i will go is your appraisal part of the systematic review here you have some tool called amster so the amster means it's a tool which is used to assess the quality of systematic reviews totally you have around 11 points which you have to be checked in the first point is was an priori design provided it means the protocol has been registered anywhere okay if you read the systematic review you will come to know whether it has to be registered or not so that's why i told you priori design is very important the next aspect is was that the duplicate study selection and data extraction was been done means see at least two independent extractors has to be done then consensus has to be provided for example in a systematic review clearly says two reviewers has been involved in study selection and data extraction process you have to give yes it means that particular review has done this job properly same way comprehensive literature search performed yes or no to give yes minimum two electronic based search has to be involved and the reference list has to be supplemented by all those things so that's why i said this part also is very important in your critical appraisal part next is was the status of publication used as an inclusion criteria means it's a gray literature unpublished literature also has to be involved so that also has to be clearly captured then is was a list of studies included and excluded provided as you remember i have mentioned while doing the flow chart you have to write what is the reason for exclusion of your studies same way inclusion is very clear cut what are all the included studies you will be giving the results there i mean a reference there in case if that particular paper has not mentioned that you have to give score of no next is where the characteristics of the included studies provided this mainly you have to see it in your table as i just explained to you in previous slide three parameters has to be captured that is participants intervention and outcome okay if the table has this three parameters then you can straight away give yes professor Next babu excuse me yeah. about the gray literature one of the participant asked that whether it is necessary to include a uh, gray literature exactly exactly okay. so that's why in case if it's not involved here i have to give score no Mm -hmm. it means you are compromising the quality of systematic review at that particular domain thank you next is was the scientific quality of included studies assessed it means any risk of bias tool has been used in that particular study okay was the scientific quality of the included studies used appropriately formulating question it means sorry it means point 7 is whether the tool used yes or no that's all question 8 is the result of your risk of bias assessment has to be included while framing your conclusion it means your conclusion should have the result of risk of bias assessment is this clear to everybody yeah okay next is where the methods used to combine the finding of the studies are appropriate it means whether the meta analysis has been performed or not so that is your question number 9 next 
was the likelihood of publication bias assessed publication bias will be coming with the meta analysis part that dr saju will be explaining it to you in detail so if the publication bias has been assessed you can give the score of yes for this next is was the conflict of interest included if you see the end of the paper you would have been clearly saying certain paper saying that there will be conflict of interest or there is no conflict of interest whatever is the results if they mentioned there you can give the score of yes is this okay this is how you have to critically appraise your uh, published systematic reviews yes thank you okay so the talk take home message in my presentation which i told you is prospero database i explained to you review question has to be mainly based on your because research question search methodology search strategy you have to frame with or and and don't type you have to select from that option database minimum two date language is important you have to clearly mention and what clinical trial registry you are doing it up you have to mention that as well your reference list of published reviews textbook and included articles and contact the authors for missing information prisma flowchart is very important as i told you you have to mention the reasons for exclusion after reading full text as well then finally the data extraction i told you general characteristics or the details about the participants intervention and outcome has to be captured okay it was great i should i cannot say i find a term to uh, say that how much grateful and useful you are for the presentation of you thank then, you uh, i suggest to read this particular paper as a beginners so here we have accumulated the systematic reviews of endodontics and then we have appraised based on the methodological and reporting quality and we have said what are all the parameter is very well addressed in endodontics what parameter is not addressed in endodontics so that they will know what is the important of the each point which can be addressed in future mm -hmm. then this particular Bob, sorry sorry Um, professor bob would you please uh, if if uh, i mean after your presentation if it would be great if you can share the link to this article in the chat box sure 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 i will do that thank you then uh, this particular editorial which published in international endodontic journal if you read this particular editorial we have mentioned what are all the few factors which uh helps you to produce high quality of manuscript which we have mentioned very clearly in this paper then this also we published in international endodontic journal uh which here we have clearly wrote what are all the glossaries it means what is the most common terms which used in writing your systematic review and meta analysis we have totally captured around seven items i think so for each item we have given the explanation in simple terms so that it will be useful for you guys especially for the beginners to understand about the each parameters again this paper we published in international endodontic journal this particular paper we have clearly explained about how to write an abstract of systematic reviews totally the prisma has given 12 points but coming to the endodontic point of view we have mentioned what is the explanation of each item and what are all the examples of each item so that it will be easy for the endodontist to capture it up thank you thank you to you it was amazing i really appreciate it i learned a lot from you i should say i'm still hungry to hear more <laughs> Thank you. It was amazing, uh, Professor Nekufar, Professor Khami. Uh, do you want to turn off your microphone? Okay. okay. So uh, yeah. yes, thank you. Thank you very much for your nice presentation, informative presentation. So what you presented comes from your experience as well as the. Uh, resources that you use, so it's uh, really valuable. When you have done all these things, and now you are explaining that those things to R, so it's uh, so uh, useful and uh, I think informative. So thank you very much again. Um, uh, I think now we are on time, uh, and according to our plan, now uh, we will have a, a break. But before that, I think if there is any question left in the chat box, we can just focus on them. 
uh, of course, we will have again, we will have again time for um, questions. Uh, I mean, during the next presentations, if there is any questions, question then the participants can ask in the chat box and we can um, go to them and uh, try to find the answer. So, okay. Uh, so we have just one question, how to find gray literature? Maybe this, this is a question that we can answer before the break. How yeah, we can find have, gray literature? So you have an exclusive database to capture uh, gray literatures. So in that databases, you can capture that. You just type in Google gray uh -huh. literature databases, automatically it will be opening it up so that you can use those databases. You can mention the similar way how we are mentioning it like PubMed and Medline. Same way you can mention the name of that particular database also. Okay, thank you for your thank you for your answer. And then, uh, okay, so I can I think we can now have the break. Yes, it's exactly Sorry? half past. Three. I have a I have a yes, question. Okay, okay, sure, uh, sure. Uh, my question that Dr. Motivasilian uh, asked that question already. Um, is uh, uh, can can you hear me now? Yes. yes. No problem. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, is is about uh, the way that we search and the logic and the boolean uh, sentence that we should type for our search. For example, in PubMed, you mentioned that we can put it in PubMed, and then copy and paste that logic and the way of the search. For example, in Scopus or in other databases. But the thing, sometimes the, these things are different in different databases. And when we search, for example, in Escopus, maybe the logic is different. So if we put same uh, Boolean uh, sentences in that one, that may not work properly. Mm -hmm. And also I find it out uh, these days in PubMed, sometimes even if I search for something very simple, the result that comes from PubMed is confusing. Have you ever had some experience as well? Because even if, when I put my name, if I, if I put Nekufa, I couldn't find my articles. So I'm surprised about it. Is there any problem with the PubMed? And have you have had any experience like that? No, Prof. That issue is we should know how exactly we are tapping the words. For example, if you type Nekufa, it won't capture all your papers. For example, Journal of Antidontics, your name will be reflecting as Mohammed Nir Kufur, whereas in IEJ it will say Mohammed Yen Nir Kufur won't be captured. So in that case, if you type mm -hmm. Nir Kufur, IEJ paper will be lost. Okay. So that's why to be safer side, you have to type Mohammed Nir Kufur, Mohammed Yen Nir Kufur Yam. Okay, so that all your papers will be getting captured. So. Can we use this logic, for example, in Escopus now, or should we use different way for that? Yeah, exactly, but you have to use your different ways. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I want to use this opportunity to thank Professor Khami, Professor Mohammed Khami, and Professor Motavasilian for her excellence moderation of the session. And I think she was the only good student of this uh, sessions because she answered all the questions very well. Oh, just I tried. Because, <laughs> yeah, but that, that was great. By the way, Wenki, as uh, Professor Khami mentioned that, that was very, very great yeah. that we learned from you because you did all of these papers. And when you cite to some papers, just an example, all of them were your paper. And we are very proud, very honored in Tehran University of Medical Sciences to have you as one of us. Thank you very much again. We appreciate that. And we are going actually to uh, enjoy from your teaching for the next uh, sessions as well very soon. So uh, you are full of knowledge and we don't leave you alone. Make sure that Thank you, we we remove everything and we extract all of your knowledge, then you can go. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> sure, we, need, we need more workshop presented by Professor uh, Babu if uh, he gives us a uh, valuable time uh, uh, in spite of his busy schedule. It would be a great honor to have uh, more workshop with uh, Professor Babu, please. Sure, sure. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and also
the chat box, I can see a lot of amazing feedback about this session. And yeah. uh, I, I may ask my colleague uh, Zohra Sadagi to send you all of them because it's good for you to see what the participants shows their appreciation to your presentation. Thank you very much. So, so you did well. You are a fantastic teacher. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Bye-bye by now for 15 yeah, minutes. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. Dr. Saju has already entered in, is in the flow. After 10, it's a break for 10 minutes time, right? Yeah, we will yeah, come so back. That meantime, he can check whether he can scan, share his screen so that we can yeah. start within 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Yeah. Time. Sure, we'll come back again at 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Babu, good. <clears throat> Thank you, sir.